Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. I'm so, so glad. All week, I've been sharing some deep truths with you to help your productivity, to help your fruitfulness in God. And before we go into this, today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Now, today is Friday. So, hey, you know, just like the man that I got told them, on the sixth day, you will gather twice. Why? Because on, on the seventh day, then there won't be any manna. So you must gather for two days. So today we're going to call for daily bread. I'll last you till Monday. Are you ready? Thank you, Jesus. Say with me, say, Father, I receive divine supply from you. Even for this weekend. I make the demand of it. And I know you will give it to me. So I receive it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Yes, the supply for you. Praise God. Remember yesterday I told you how angels walk. God has given them charge concerning you already. So when the Lord told us to pray this prayer, and you don't pray it in your mind. I keep telling you that. Don't pray it in your mind. Open your mouth and say it. Declare it. Demand it. Oh. And, and, and sometimes... And as the day progresses, you may have a need for something. Hey, always remember, ask God for daily bread today. Lord, I, I, I have asked you for my daily bread today. I, I need some supplies right now. That's how you behave. You walk into a shop, you're looking for something, you're pricing that, you're looking at the price that, well, Lord, I receive supplies right now for this thing. In Jesus' name. That's how to live. It doesn't matter how big. It doesn't, but sometimes people say, ah, it's a small thing now. Why, why should I trouble God? Come on. He, he loves the trouble. He <laughs> is good. Oh, yes. He loves the trouble. So, open your hearts and receive from Him. He is willing and ready. Not just ready. He has already given the angels the command concerning Him. Praise God. So, we are talking about being fruitful and being productive. Being fruitful and being productive. God demands that from you. He supplied the grace for you. And so I was teaching yesterday how it works. The pressure comes on you. The challenge is there before you. Now you don't run helter skelter to get those challenges met. You go to the Lord and say, Lord, you are the one that's delivering me from all these challenges, all those bills. Now, 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 you know, it's the beginning of a new month. So, oh, there are some bills that ought to be paid. Hey, brothers and sisters, God is aware. <laughs> He's fully aware. It's an affliction. Yes. You know how life can be sometimes. Oh, can you imagine? The same month, my rent is expiring. My, 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 my children's school fees ought to be paid. My whatever bills. You look at all those things, you know, that's one, one, one way to remember. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh, but the Lord delivers him from them all. You know what? You see all this barrage, all these, these challenges that are before me. One after the other, the Lord is going to deliver me. So we welcome challenges. Oh, they are sweet. You know why? Because I'm going to use you to increase in the knowledge of I'm, God is going to teach me something through this process. I'm going to learn something new through this process that's going to help me. And guess what? It's not every month he expects you to be falling into the hands of the same kind of challenge. If that's the case with you, it means you have not learned from previous times. See that now? Look at how easily God meets your needs, for example. Look at how easily God takes care of certain things in your life. Study it. Every miracle God does in your life is what study. So how do I study? Sit down, meditate, look at the process. Look at everything that happened around that period. Then you begin to see that, oh, do you, oh now I see why. God made me meet so so and so person two weeks ago. Wow, it was because of today. And I remember that day. It was the Spirit of God that was nudging me to go to that place. Ah, uh, ah, uh, woo. Imagine if I didn't obey, then, wow, 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 wow. So you know what, man, Lord, 
I'm sorry for all the times I've disobeyed you, but I've learned something. Anytime you nudge me, Lord, just help me know you're the one nudging me. I will obey. And that's what shows you have learned. That's what shows you have seen. You make a commitment. While you're giving thanks to God, you make a commitment. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, so God demands productivity from you. And now, now when you are productive and people, you see, because everything God leads you to do will bless people's lives. Everything. Everything. And it is the blessing of people's lives that God sees and enjoys. And that's what will make him bless you more. Let me take that again. Everything God tells you to do or leads you to do will eventually become a blessing to people's lives. Now, it is when people are enjoying that thing that will cause God to bless you. So everything, everything that you're involved with must be fruitful, must, must spell fruitfulness and we must see productivity. Whatever you do. Now, you remember I was talking to you last uh, a few days ago about um, even though you don't have a job, you know, in quotes, you know what I mean by job, you, you walk in somewhere. God can, it's not a problem with God. God will still bless you like one who has a job. He can still bless you. It's his job, you are his responsibility. But you see, the blessing comes when you are truly working for him. Now, that is the number one work we all have. You know, now, you know, sometimes you say, but the Bible say, let him that does not work, let him not eat. Which work was he talking about? He was, he was addressing church members. So he was saying, he was not talking about anyone who doesn't have a regular job. He's talking about anyone who doesn't work in the service in church, like a worker in church. He said, that one should not receive, because he was talking to the pastor. See that now? That one should not receive. If the person is not working, that one should not receive from the things the church gives up. That's simply what he was talking about. Because you can't say anybody who doesn't have a job should not eat. Are you the one giving the person food? <laughs> you can only say that if the person is depending on you for food. So when Paul says, anyone who doesn't work, let him not eat. He wasn't saying the people that don't have job. Now, that would be very insensitive. He was rather talking about um, uh, commitment and responsibility in, in the group. So the person who's not working in the group, don't give him food. Don't give him, because those who are working eat. So he was saying the one who's not working is responsible. Don't give him from, from. You understand what I'm talking about? But then the other part, he says, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him get a job working with his own hands so that he will have to give to him that doesn't have. Now, if, even though the reasoning of that scripture will teach you something. He says, number one, he was talking to the thief, the ones that used to steal before. The brethren who used to steal before, and now they are born again. So, uh, what do I do now? I, I used to steal for a living. <laughs> Praise God. So, now that I'm born again, I cannot steal. I told you, a righteous man, his options are limited. So, Paul says, instead of him to steal, let him rather go get a job. He was, it was the thief he was talking about. Let him rather go get a job. So, telling you that the basest thing a child of God can do is to get a job. So that's like where you don't know where to start from in faith. You, you understand what I'm saying? Where you don't know where to start from in faith, the, the basest thing you can do is at least let me go get a job. So I'm earning something. But then notice what he said he should do with what he earns. And that's another day's teaching. He says, rather let him get a job so that he will have to give to the one who doesn't have. He wasn't stealing to give to the one who doesn't have. I don't think so. He was stealing to eat for himself. Now Paul admonishes him. Now you can't steal again. 
Yeah, but I don't know what to do. Go get a job. When you are paid, you have something now. So what do I do with it? Give. So, what was Paul saying? It is not your job that will sustain you. But use your job money to get into God's system. What is God's system? Now, when he says give, he doesn't say what to give. Or, or, or Now, he just made an open statement. Give to the one who doesn't have. Now, that could be in tithing. That could be in giving seed offering. That, you understand what I'm saying? Now, it could be any of those things. Because now you're working. So, you, you earn money. And when that money is given to you, the first thing you ought to do is to take out your tithe. And when you take out your tithe, and then you go before the Lord, Lord, what do I do with this? The Lord will tell you, oh, give it to Susan, so person. So you end up giving. See that now? You end up giving. Oh, Lord, I just started working. So, so, so this is my first fruit. This is my first salary. Ah, what do I do with it? Because it, give it to that, that, that man of God. Give it to your pastor. Because that's the law of first fruits. It must be given to your pastor, your man of God. Not, not, not because Ezekiel told us that so that he will cause the blessing to rest in your house. Fresh food is an announcement you are making before God that you have entered into your inheritance or you have begun to enter into your inheritance. For example, the thief gets a job now. He earns a salary. Now that's the first time he's earning a salary righteous money now. So it means he has changed his ways. You see that first salary, the wisest thing for him to do is to give his first fruit. So Ezekiel told us, you give it to the priest, give it to the, the, the man of God and the Spirit of God can direct you on this. Now why, why did he say you must give it? Because he said that he will cause the blessing to rest in your house. So I said, first fruit is an announcement that you have entered into or you have begun to enter. That's why I use the thief as an example. Now, you could, be, you could have been praying for a particular job and then God gives you that job. Now, when you get that job, the first payment you receive is the fruit from that job. So what are you supposed to do? You give your first fruit. Why are you giving your first? It's not because anybody's looking for your money. It is you that is announcing to God and especially to the angels that I have come into my place of inheritance. And this is the fruit I have received. Bearing witness that the land is fruitful. See that now? Now, when you do that and you obey the Lord, oh Lord, here's my first fruit. And he directs you on who to give it to. Or you take it to your man of God or like we say, your prophet that you believe in. Why? You don't, you don't give first fruit in church. You don't send it to, to, to a church. No, there must be contact with your, the, your pastor, your man of God. There must be contact. And you must state it that this is my first fruit. I'm announcing before the Lord that I have stepped in to my inheritance. And then he will stand as God's witness. You don't understand. The reason you give first fruit is not because of God, it's because of the ground. Let me quickly show you a scripture. Hebrews. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. And verse 7. Understand this thing. Sometimes, you know, now because people like I say people lack spiritual understanding. So even these things, you know, all the people think about is money. They want to collect your money. So somebody wakes up one day and say, I've discovered all those things are part of the old testament. And then they lack spiritual understanding. So they cannot relate these things in the new testament. They can't. Why? They lack the understanding. It's as simple as that. So they don't even know why God was giving them those instructions in, in what they call the Old Testament in the first book. They don't know why. They think, you know, so you hear people say, you know, because in the Old Testament, tithe was used to sustain the priest. Tithe was used to sustain. And because God told them not to get, not to walk, so he would take care of them. Brothers and sisters, who, did God send you to go and walk now? 
The gods need to work to sustain yourself. Didn't Jesus say, take no thought for your life? Why? Because he has made us, we, all of us, we have, we have, he, has been made, he has made us a kingdom of priests. A kingdom of priests. What does that mean? Because we are only supposed to do what God commands us to do. It is because you are not living the life of a priest. That's why you think tithes is, is over in the Old Testament. Every one of us, born again believers of Jesus Christ, we are priests unto God. You don't know that. And because we are priests unto God, we are sustained from the temple. Now, which temple now are we talking about? The temple in heaven, not an earthly temple. So we are sustained from the place of that temple. And the Holy Spirit is the administrator of these supplies. And if you are doing the job of a priest, what do I mean doing the job of a priest? If you stay where God commands you to stay, that could mean a job, that could be, and then you do the things he commands you to do, something as simple as, my son, from today, I want you to be praying for your boss for five minutes every day. That's an assignment given to you by God. Even though you are working in a place. So now you realize that your being there is an assignment unto God. If you are doing that job, oh, there's a supply for you. I'm telling you, there is a supply that God has set for you. But because many of us don't live as priests, so we think these are Old Testament things, brothers and sisters. The Old Testament was a shadow. You know what a shadow is? A shadow tells you that it's a real one. So if the Old Testament is the shadow, where is the real one? The real one is supposed to be more accurate, more clear than the shadow. So now you say it's all part of the Old Testament. So take it off. Take off the shadow. Have you taken out the real? You only took out the light. Because the only thing that exposes shadow is light. Take out the light. And then the shadow will be no more. So when you tell people something is part of the Old Testament, now we are in the New Testament, so that thing doesn't matter. You are saying, take out the light. And what happens? When you take out the light, you cause darkness. So you are not on God's side. You're on the devil's side. And when people talk like that, they talk carelessly because they lack spiritual understanding. Anyways, I'll show you in scripture. Praise God. Look at it. Verse 7. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For the earth, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 7. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herb useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessing from God. <laughs> Did you see that? He's talking about the earth. The earth which drinks rain. Who sends the rain? God. So God supplies rain to the earth. So the earth, he's talking about the earth now. The earth that drinks this rain that comes from God and bears fruits, herbs that are useful for people who cultivate it. So the earth drinks rain, it bears herbs, people cultivate it and they use it. They use it for food, they use it for whatever they use it for, that is good. You understand what I'm saying? He said, that earth, God blesses it. Watch this, verse 8. But if it bears thorns and bears, it is rejected and near to being cursed, whose end is to be born. So the same earth that receives rain, if it doesn't produce good fruits, it says God separates it for a cause. The earth that produces good fruit, God blesses it. <laughs> I think I have to explain this to you next week because our time is up. Ah, there's, there's so much here. There's so much here. <laughs> but get it. Get it. Everything you do in fruitfulness, in productivity, that causes men to receive good things causes men's life to be made easy you receive blessing from the Lord. i'll stop here today but hear me set your mind for productivity set your mind for goodness and god will make it happen in the name of the lord jesus i bless you this weekend 
you will see God move in your life in a mighty way. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless everything that concerns you. Go and do well. Go and be fruitful. Be productive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you on Monday. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you. Bye-bye.